Welcome back to scrapbook.com. I'm Jane Davenport and I'm really excited to show you some of my new collection with Spellbinders. I've got a little technique, a little tip to show you using some of my die cuts. I want to share with you one of my favorite ways to use embellishments. It doesn't involve glues. I don't need to use matte medium. I can have a whole lot of fun completely personalizing, creating my own embellishments, and then I can just lay them over any type of medium. I don't have to worry about smearing or any of those other things that can pop up. Let's get started. I've got some of my matte acrylic paints here some of my mermaid brushes. I'm going to wet my brush. I like to just, just wipe that brush off, just leave her there to the side. And I'm going to just start with one of my favorite colors. So usually when I start to paint, I work intuitively and I just like to pick the color that calls to me first. So today, this little mauve number called to me. So when I've created my paints, the markers, everything that I do. I put a lot of time into the color selection so that when you paint with them, you get colors that go together and aren't going to make muddy colors unless you want them to. They're going to stay nice and bright and, you know, have that pop. Now, I put way too much paint down there for <laughs> because I was talking to you. You distracted me. <laughs> That's your fault. Not really. There's just something about a paintbrush and paint. As you can see, I'm just kind of randomly plopping color kind of everywhere. I don't mind if I've got a little thick build up here and there. Just wash this paintbrush off. Grab another color. I'm just going to dab a little bit of paint in amongst the areas that I've already started. So I've washed my brush off a little. Don't have to wash it off completely, but I do want to take the water off it again and just pop this back on. So the type of paper that you're working on, you can just work on your favorite paper. So it can be a watercolor paper if you really, really wanted to. Now I'm working on a Nina Smooth cardstock just a nice uh, smooth paint and because I'm in Arizona and it's a dry heat <laughs> um, things that the paint is drying really really quickly you're going to get a different experience wherever you are across the country across the world actually let's get a little bit more off so you can see that I'm just sort of putting it in little patches here and there I'm going to use this pink and connect them up Again, working intuitively with the color. I don't really have any rhyme or reason, but just working away, just adding color, enjoying the experience. I'm going to add this final ink blue as a color just here, pop it in just the areas I haven't already painted. Again, I can just wash my brush off a little. Don't have to get it completely clean. Oh, this blue. Mm. So you would think, you know, a dark blue would drag things down, would drag these bright colors down, but it actually helps them pop uh, because it gives them something to resonate off. And that's just the way color works. I actually studied at the School of Color and Design. That's a real place. And learn all about color. And... I just, it's, but it's a never ending surprise the way things work, the way color works. So again, I'm kind of just connecting these little pockets of color. Now I'm going to do a little bit of finger painting. Again, just enjoying the process. I like to say, trust the mess. It'll always lead you somewhere nice. I can mix these colors a little. So that's pretty much all I would need to do. I'm going to show you a few things that I prepared earlier. Here are some other uh, pages, basically with exactly the same colors that I've used, uh, that I've shown you. And I've added in a little pop of yellow on this one, 
little pop of green. These are all paints from my collection. I've used the paintbrush in a different way on here, just putting on stripes, you know, coming back over with little splodges. But really, I'm just creating random, pretty backgrounds in colors that I love. Now I want to make this a giant sticker. So I can just add one of these mixed media adhesive sheets. And this is a double sided uh, sticky sheet. I'm going to peel off the back like so. Now this is a bit wet for me to do it. You would have to just wait for it to dry. Let's see if I, I won't really be able to press it down. But you get the idea. Once everything's all dry, um, we'll be able to use this as a sticker, but of course we don't want to remove the other side of the sticky sheet at this point. We're going to let it dry and if there's any, any excess of the sticky, you want to take that off. So now it is time to die cut. And oh wait a minute, I meant to start that with, and now it is time to die cut. So we have to make a sandwich when we die cut. Start with the platform, put one of the neon pink plates down. Here is one of my pretty pages that I've already painted and I've I basically just ripped it in half so that it fits through the machine nicely. So we want to put our piece of paper right side up. So the side that you want to use needs to be facing you. And when we put our die down, we want that cutting edge going down so that it works. If you put things through and nothing cuts, it might mean your die is upside down. Rookie error, it can happen to anyone, has happened to me. Um, I just want to place this on here. You can have a little bit of fun working out where you're going to put it, you know, catching particular colors that you might like. I'm going to put some of my sea flowers on here and my mermaid tail because I love the mermaid tail. Just arrange those how I want them. There are smaller dies in my collection too. You can usually sneak a few little ones in there as well. I want to put my cutting plate on the top so that I'm making a nice little sandwich. I've got everything nice and neat. I'm just going to push it up. You can feel when it gets to the roller bars, that little bit of resistance. Hand on top just to keep the machine still. And we just want to get that going and crank that handle. Get that mermaid working. Now you'll hear some lovely cracks and that is the cutting plate hitting the die. And it's a nice sound to hear. It means everything's working. And that's all, that's it. Now we lift this off. Oh, she cut so well, she took off without me. I'm gonna put that die down here, that die down here, that die down here. You might be able to use this for something else. I'm going to put it to the side. What will happen over time is you will get the impression of where the die hits there. It always looks very pretty at first. Enjoy it while it lasts. Things will get messy. That's mixed media. And the next thing we want to do is release our little embellishment from here. So I've got the tool in one from Spellbinders. Look at that. She pops out all ready for me to create with. I'm just going to pop through there. Gorgeous. Now these have got some larger parts that are going to come out. So I'm just going to pop this little all end through there just to get those larger pieces out. And that will just help me release that beautiful mermaid tail. Then I might have um, some little excess left on here and I want to leave my dies nice and clean for the next time that I use them and I can use the little tool and one just to release them like that. Like It's like a little shower of confetti. Whee! <laughs> you just have to grab fun wherever you can. That's what I say. I've got one of my art journals out and actually, I'll just show you here on the front, I've already used a little bit of an embellishment and throughout this book, I've got one girl here that I haven't added any embellishment to yet at all. And I think she needs a little bit more, but I do want to show you in here is one of my die cuts 
and here that's actually some of the waste or the negative that's come out of it. So because of this technique that I'm showing you, you can just sneak little things in and it just adds to the overall feeling, plus it's fun to do. So I've got my little pieces here and I've got a few extras that I cut earlier and I can start playing with where I might want to place them. So I call this process auditioning. It's one of my favorite things to do. So I can take, this is the little mermaid tail. I can take that around and think, where could I use this? And this is usually where you can come up with other ideas. I could use that as a little hat. I could maybe incorporate that as a little swirl in her hair or a little accessory. Maybe I could make it some sort of necklace. But what called out to me was actually putting it over here. I just love the look of the pink that's on this little embellishment over the yellow that's just randomly on the page. And when I was building this particular journal page, this is all the leftover paint. So usually at home in my studio, rather than washing my paintbrush out in water, very often I just have a journal open and I wipe my paintbrush off, any excess paint off on a random page and I get some little delicious layers happening that way. And I'm going to put this one here, I think, and I might add some little flowers here. I could layer them up. And let's just do that then. So I'm going to pop this here. And one of the joys of this is it's very, very flat and it's instant, instant gratification. We like that. So I can add it to this dry page. Oh, and I've actually already got that little face there. So we can kind of use this as a little hat, but I might also be able to incorporate it as if this might be an ocean behind her. And then as I'm talking to you, I'm thinking ocean and for some reason the idea of ocean of ideas has just popped into my head. So I'm thinking that this is the ocean of ideas. I have in the past, I've used matte medium to actually even stick the little bit of uh, sticker back uh, down as well. It's like a little ghostly creation that's there just with glue. Um, and I might pop this girl actually, actually, let me just see something. Maybe some little earrings. That could be kind of cute. Let me just check these colors. Again, this is that auditioning process. So the reason that I adore mixed media is art journaling. I love working in a book. As an artist who has you know, had gallery shows and has worked um, on canvas and you know, had my own gallery, uh, the freedom of working in a journal, of working in something that's just for me. There's no rules, there's no audience if I don't want. It's just very, very freeing. I'm gonna put these on as little earrings that are blowing in the wind. I mean, she's she's standing in front of the ocean of ideas. And then I'll come, you know, later with maybe a pencil or paper, make the little ear hole there a little bit more. Yum, I like doing that, that is fun, it's gratifying. Just pat that down. I don't need to use glue or anything else because sticker, it doesn't have stickers. So I've got a little bit of razzmatazz happening here. And there's one more thing that I wanted to show you. This particular face that I've drawn started off as one of my stencils. So I've used some of my squid ink to put that face down and just start that little face off and then uh, create and build layers and create a whole world of my own and have a lot of fun in the process. That's what I love about mixed media. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, ring that bell, leave a comment, send us a love message. Happy crafting.